Werewolf Fell in Love with Me later in this show. But first, no one must know my partner is a werewolf. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I am in a probationary period of two years with part of my grandpa's inheritance. I have to stay out of trouble until I'm 24 years old in order to get the money and properties and stocks and jewelry and the rest of it. The trouble is that I've got a werewolf for a boyfriend and if my family found out, I'd end up receiving almost nothing out of what is due to me. So my guy, let's call him Chad, has to keep a low profile and act like he isn't my boyfriend. When my dad is around, Chad is my gay friend. We got the idea from this old TV comedy show starring these Hollywood weirdos who dress up as women for some reason I forget. Maybe they were trying to get a job at the White House. So I didn't make Chad dress up as a girl, but I had him act like he only wanted to be friends with girls. It isn't very believable, so mostly I just try and keep Chad away from my parents for the time being. He is used to hiding in the shadows after all. Most werewolves are. He was keeping his identity a secret long before he met me. Chad is a garage mechanic, so if I do get cut off from my inheritance, I hope he can support me. Lord knows I wouldn't have the patience or attention span to hold down any kind of job I've ever heard of. Maybe I can hire someone to write a book for me on Amazon and pay my rent that way. They make it look easy to do on those YouTube commercials. I have one younger sister who I can confide in, and nobody else. The rest of my family know that if I get screwed out of my inheritance, then more goes to them. My younger sister would not get anything more or less if I were removed from the picture, so she has no motivation to knife me in the back. I'd actually be sharing my inheritance with her anyway. She's the only person I can trust. She was just asking me what it's like to do it with a werewolf. And I had to say I wouldn't know. I always leave immediately when he tells me he's about to transform. I have seen it happen. I have watched from what I hope was a safe distance. Sitting in my car, I turn the motor on and idle in neutral while I watch so that if the creature notices me, I can peel out of there. It's taken a chance, and Chad warned me not to do that. But it's not like I do it every time. Sometimes the werewolf comes to look for me. Chad tells me he doesn't remember these events, but it seems that something in his subconscious guides him to whatever family estate I'm sleeping in that night. In fact, the first few times I saw the werewolf, I didn't even know it was Chad. We had been friends for almost half a year before he asked me out, and I had been seeing the werewolf for almost two months already when that happened. Back then, I used to tell my family when I saw the creature, but obviously that all stopped when I found out who it was creeping around out there. But that's the thing. It isn't really him when it's the werewolf. It's an animal that is drawn to me. It's not my boyfriend, even if it turns back into him in the morning. He warned me multiple times that he has no memory of what he does past the transformation out and the transformation back in. I believe him, because the two of them act like complete opposites. For instance, my boyfriend Chad is deathly afraid of my father. He was afraid of him long before I told him to act gay when Dad was around, too. When he hears my father coming, and Dad marches wherever he goes so you can always hear him from the other end of the hall, Chad runs and hides like a little mouse. But the first time I encountered the werewolf, I was out for a walk with my father at night. We were on the grounds of the family's northern Michigan estate, and it does sometimes get foggy over there by the water. It was like walking through some magic spell or something. You could literally see the air moving all around you. There wasn't much else that you could see due to the intensity of the fog that night. So Dad and I walked arm in arm and kept our pace slow. Honestly, if we had gone faster, we might have walked into a tree. That's how hard it was to see out there. 
Even though we knew our way and had been taking that walk my entire life, it was still scary to be out in that murky fog. And then, ah, it roared at us, and it ran toward us. Its eyes were lit up so brightly, I could see them through the mist before I could see anything else. It was a monster running at us in the night, and my father struck it with his cane. It was taller than my father, and appeared to be some kind of humanoid furry canine. But after Dad gave it a whack with his cane, the thing ran off, whimpering, and sounding like a dog much smaller than his size. It was Daddy that used the word werewolf to describe what he had hit. He pointed to the club of his cane and noted to me that it was Captain Silver. Never walk at night in northern Michigan without a silver weapon to defend yourself with, he admonished me. Later on, I asked Dad what he meant when he called that weird animal man a werewolf. Did he mean that literally? Dad had to think about it before answering. And it was one of the only times in my life when he admitted to me that he didn't know. Dad always presents a strong front. He tends to act like he's got everything under control, whether he really does or not. He's a natural leader. And some of leadership comes from honesty. The rest of leadership comes from potential, and sometimes my dad is full of it. Of course, I say that affectionately, but this time he laid it on the line for me. Dad admitted that he didn't know what that creature was that we encountered on our walk. Maybe it was a wild beast that happened to resemble a man. Or maybe Dad meant werewolf in the original European sense of the term. Maybe, Dad admitted, we really had been charged by a cursed human or man, afflicted with lycanthropy. All Dad knew was that his father and his father's father had warned him that there were werewolves in northern Michigan, and that one had to be armed with silver weaponry. I asked him if that meant that silver bullets were a real thing, and he answered with a shrug saying that his father and grandfather sure believed it. And we both heard the yiping and whimpering that big beast man made after Dad gave him that silver love tap. I asked Dad if they made any silver mace, and we both had a father-daughter chuckle. But Dad got serious, and he told me to keep my mother's cat in for the next week, because he was going to have hunters out there looking to get rid of that wolf man. All that was two months before I even started dating Chad, so... Our relationship almost ended before it started. It showed me what Dad would do if he found a werewolf on his property. And that was, he would have it terminated. You can probably understand why we kept Chad's problem a secret. I'm sure I don't need to explain that part. My dad wants Chad dead, but he doesn't know that he wants that. We need to keep him not knowing that. If we don't, then Chad will be six feet under, and I'll be in the poorhouse. Wishing I was under the ground with my Chad. Life can be cruel sometimes, but death is a real bitch if you ask me. I'd like to keep Chad out of the hands of that bitch. Or any bitch, really. I tried to set Chad up in one of the former servants' homes we weren't using any longer, but the situation got out of hand almost immediately. I didn't know that the help was using that house to store things and occasionally dropping by there to either pick items up or drop more off into storage. And one of the younger women who was sent on an errand to that home arrived there on one of those dark, foggy nights I was telling you about. Through the mist, she told us all later on, there came two evil, alien lights. That's what she called them, evil alien lights. And then the fog parted. And she saw that those evil alien lights were eyes in the skull of an evil alien dogman. She said it snarled at her. And she dropped the boxes she was carrying. And she ran back to the main house, screaming her head off the entire way. She said it was the dogman, the Michigan dogman. And it had glowing eyes like a space alien. 
They sounded more demonic to me, those eyes. But I suppose it's six of one and half a dozen of the other, huh? So Chad stays away from any of our properties now, except during the week of the new moon, which is usually pretty safe for him. He's almost never transformed during that time of his month. But he's got to act like he isn't my boyfriend if he drops by to see my family. So I usually find a way to go see him instead. Everywhere we go, we're paranoid that someone from my family or their friends will see us together and figure out what's going on between us. Public displays of affection are completely out. At least until I come of age and inherit what is rightfully mine. Then I can use that money to hire people to study Chad and see if there is any way to cure him. If we can develop a cure, then other victims of this horrible curse can come out of hiding and seek treatment. At least those who don't want to be werewolves anymore. Chad tells me that some werewolves want to be that way. Some even became that way on purpose. As for Chad, he tells me that he doesn't know how he became this way. Only that it started happening as he hit puberty. His mother moved out to the country and raised him far from other people. Chad never knew his father but I'm guessing that's who he inherited the curse from. Well, if we can hide my boyfriend for two more years, then I can have someone sequence Chad's DNA and do some blood work. We can start looking for clues to try to understand what this is that the poor guy is dealing with. And if we can cure him, then maybe Chad and I can have children. But until that time, no one must know. My partner is a werewolf. Story number two. The werewolf fell in love with me. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I have a lovesick werewolf on my hands, and I'm not sure what to do about it. He seems to want to be close with me, and yet he refuses to revert to human form. I can't let him into my house in his animal shape. He would smell the place up. I wish he would just go away. But he doesn't seem intelligent enough to obey simple commands like sit or stay or get lost. The first time I met this dog man, I was camping with an idiot who I'm going to call Dirk the Jerk. Dirk brought me out to the middle of the woods under the pretense of us camping and getting to know each other better. As soon as the campfire was going though, Dirk decided to get too familiar with me too fast. And when I asked him to slow down, he said something really creepy. No, kind of scary actually. He asked me where I was going to run to, with nothing but nature all around us for miles and miles. He started talking about how his legs were longer than mine so he could run faster. And how he was on the track team a few years back and he kept in shape. He said that even if I tried to run, he could easily catch up to me. Now that's not boyfriend talk. That's horror movie villain talk. So I got Dirk the Jerk drunk. And then I snuck off into the night. Using the flashlight of my cell phone to light the way through the forest. Not the best plan. Don't try this at home, folks. Dirkly Jerkerson came too back in camp and started screaming like a lunatic when he couldn't find me. That was when he really started to sound like he was in a horror movie. As for me, I was trying to be as quiet as I could and put some distance between me and Captain Alcohol back there. I have to say the dogman's timing was impeccable. He showed up just as Dirk caught up to me and he got between us. Back to me front to Dirk. He was so drunk that he walked into the dogman two or three times before registering that he was an immovable object. The Dirk tried to push the dogman out of his way, slid himself across the dirt instead, then walked forward into a tree, thinking he had moved the creature. It would have been comical to watch if the two of them weren't twice my size, and incredibly unpredictable. So Dirk pushed that dogman again and again, but the creature wouldn't move. 
Then he got down into Dirk's face and snarled at him. It was like Dirk finally realized what he'd been pushing against. And he screamed like a little three-year-old girl, and then ran away. Obviously, I was glad to have that creep out of the situation. But then that dogman or werewolf or whatever he is turned around and gave me this look that did not make me feel very comfortable at all. It was like out of the frying pan and into the fire over here, if you know what I'm saying. I got rid of one problem, but replaced it with this wolfman guy that was looking at me like he wanted to get married. You know the old jokes about wolves being aggressive towards females? Well, this one grabbed me up in his arms, and he ran off with me. At first I screamed and tried to break free of his arms, but it was pointless. So then I sort of just tried not to get whiplash after that. When he finally stopped running, the dogman dropped me onto a wooden bench, and I looked around to figure out where I was. Well, I was across the street from a bus depot. I looked around and the dogman was gone. So I just waited until I stopped feeling so dizzy. And then I went and bought a bus ticket for home. Pretty amazing little story, right? So why would I complain? He rescued me from a bad situation and set me on a course to get home. I should only be grateful to that wolfman I hear some of you saying. Well, I was at first. But then two weeks after I got home, I started thinking I was seeing things. Peripherally. Out of the corner of my eye. I would see something darting around in the backyard. I would see something out the window when I was inside. Nothing was ever there when I would look directly. Until one night. Tap, tap, tap. Something was tapping in my window. And keeping me from sleeping. I sleep upstairs. What could it be? Probably a bird. I tried to ignore it. Tap, tap, tap. There it was again. Okay, fine. I swung my legs out of bed and as I was standing up, I saw it. And my legs went out from under me. I scratched my back and banged my butt as I landed hard on the side of the bed. Then the floor. I found myself looking up at the dogman looking in my second floor bedroom window. I pulled the shade down and I went to sleep in my guest bedroom, making certain to pull all the shades down in that room first. Since then, this giant sized wolfman has made himself a nuisance in as many ways as he can manage. He seems to think that if he keeps asking, I will eventually let him into my house. He's bigger than an NFL linebacker, and he smells like dead things. I'm not allowing him in my home, and it's just not a reasonable thing to ask of me. He can stay out back, I guess, but I'm not feeding him. Let him hunt in the woods or eat the neighbor's cats, I don't care. He's not going to become my responsibility, no matter how sad he can make his eyes look. I just don't care. My friend Charlene says I owe him some Gaines burgers or something since he saved my life. But that thing could probably eat 50 bucks of food a day in this economy. And that's more than I've got to spend on myself, let alone a giant monster. Look, I'm not kicking him out. I don't even know how to. It's just that I don't think it should be my responsibility that... The werewolf fell in love with me. Real Wolfman, True Encounters in Modern America A lot of the stories we run on this channel are supposed to be true, but it's not like I have budget or time to look into any of the claims made. Someone who made her living looking into Dogman claims, though, was the late, great Linda Godfrey. If you like the stories on this show, then you should check out this incredible audiobook from Linda called Real Wolfman. True Encounters in Modern America. Linda goes back to the 1930s and tells a number of the better researched dogman and werewolf stories of the 20th and 21st centuries. It's a great overview of the subject matter, whether you're new to it or even if you think you know all the stories. It's available in audiobook, audio CD, paperback, or Kindle forums at the address in the description for this video. The audiobook is over 8 hours and is probably the best deal there. 
Plus, if you use the link in the description, supposedly you're helping us out here in some way that I'm still learning about. And now here's your old pal Bigfoot with an important message about today's executive producer. Please welcome our newest channel member, Anton. I'd make a rhyme, but I don't know how to pronounce this name, and I wouldn't want to be rude. In any case, we are most grateful to Anton for joining us, as we need all the channel members we can get to offset the decline in YouTube promoting us, which is a whole nother story that we hope turns out to be a short one. In return for helping us stay online, Anton gets to see our four new secret uncensored dogman stories that only channel members or PayPal club members get to see. Here to explain how you can join one of our clubs is our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Hank. Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more. Scary, scary stories.